Welcome to the China Team China Webinar, German Manufacturing Machines for Future Chinese Red Ocean, in partnership with Asia Biz Stories. So now I will hand over to Xiaolong Hu. Thank you, Nebo, uh, for your kind words. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> I was busy to let one participant in, um, Norbert Thomas. I don't know why I can't cannot let him in uh, since since minutes. Maybe you can take care of Thomas, and uh, the techniques sometimes doesn't work. And nice to meet you guys, and nice to uh, meet you also, Nebo. We meet each other once a month uh, to host a China webinar, and. Um, I think the value of China webinar is really to provide um, real information about the Chinese market to SMEs in Germany, in Europe. And today, uh, the dominating message, dominating news in Germany is about COVID-19. And uh, it is reported we still have more than 40,000 infected people a day uh, yesterday uh, in Germany. And a further lockdown could be expected in the near future. And therefore, um, I think uh, traveling between Germany and China uh, will be still very difficult, even in the year 2022. And uh, so I'm very pleased that uh, you are here today to exchange with us about uh, information in China, information about China business, and we have here also best practice companies to share their insights, their strategy, how they plan and manage their China business. And um, we all, as uh, uh, manufacturing companies as uh, uh, in Germany, we all uh, know the value of Chinese market but we are sometimes still worry about the future of our China business uh, um, because of the far distance, because of uh, many risks, risks we see in the newspaper. And uh, so uh, it's highly time that we can have um, some insights from other companies to see how they developing their strategy about uh, China. And today, I'm very glad to have uh, one company, Sharma MPS, with us to share their uh, experience. Especially, uh, we have Martin Apner here. And uh, Martin is uh, CTO of Sharma MPS. And uh, he's responsible for um, the company <coughs> in topics like digitalization, for innovation, but also for strategic business fields. And uh, Sharma MPS has been growing very fast in the last 10 years since I know the company and uh, more than 200% and more growth in the, in the last 10 years. <clears throat> I'm sure that uh, uh, with Martin, uh, Sharma MPS will start another um, <laughs> fast growing decade as well. And that's why he's uh, very busy always. And uh, that's why I'm very happy that he is uh, um, today with us to share his insights about uh, Strama, the future plan in China. Martin, please take over. The stage is yours. Shalom. Thank you very much for your warm welcome. And also from my side, a warm welcome to everybody here in the webinar. Yes. Um, so first of all, now check. You can see my slides well. Um, Martin, please take over the presentation uh, now. Yeah. Now. <clears throat> can you see my slides? Yes, it works. We can uh, see. We can see the whole screen. Your um, notes as well are visible. The notes are visible? Yes. Okay. That's it's good. 
good. Now it's good. Okay, perfect. So yeah. sorry for the little delay. So first of all, yes, uh, again, uh, thank you for the invitation and thank you for all the audience uh, to be here. Um, like uh, Shalung say, I'm Martin Ebner, CTO of Strama Group, sitting at the, at the back office, you see our R&D departure, where the uh, stuff and the ideas and the technology of tomorrow uh, will happen in the, in the field of, of automation industry. So first of all, the topic is uh, agile uh, strategy development for China, but uh, let, uh, then I can uh, tell this to you or explain it to you. Um, I want to talk or say some words about Strama MPS, who is Strama MPS? So, who we are? I think more Microsoft is not off mute. So. Uh, who we are, Strama MPS, uh, I'm sitting here in Straubing in the backyard there's uh, the Bavarian woods. Um, this is our factory location, one of three factory plants in Straubing uh, where we live and where our company comes from. So we have also three other locations here in Straubing uh, with, a, with a huge scale of, of, of assembly area. Uh, to build up our machines directly before we deliver it to the customers worldwide. Like Xiao Longhu says, um, we have a, a, a high increase of, of employees and also revenue in the last in the last uh, years. Um, so last year we had around about two million uh, in sales, and this year we plan 240 million of sales. Um, so. Uh, a high expand of revenue. So um, where are our employees uh, from? So we are a whole machine builder from the concept uh, till the um, also from concept to engineering for sales and also for uh, manufacturing and assembly the things online. So Strama MPS in Straubing is the, is the biggest uh, plant we have with around about 800 employees and later on we will talk about the Chinese uh, development and here you see China only want to mention it now there we have 80 around about 80 employees there but we will talk about the strategy there in a few minutes so where we are located here is the the, the map of drama MPS we are located all over the world. Why we are located all over the world? Because we are there where our customers are. Uh, we want to go there um, where our customers produce to have a, a short, short ways to our customers. And also now we see it with the pandemic, the supply chains crash. So we have uh, we we need to be there in the markets where our customers are because uh, I call it hyper globalization. Uh, do not uh, work so good. So I think we will come back to a globalization, not a hyper globalization, and therefore local for local will be a business model in the future. So what we offer, Shaolong Hu uh, says it all, uh, said it already, we are a special purpose machine builder. What does this mean? And this is very important also for our strategy in China. Uh, we normally do not build a machine a second time, the same machine in a second time. Each machine we build up is a special machine for a customer uh, for his special needs uh, and his special product. So we only build each machine once. And this is also why our business is a little bit difficult to the other uh, machine builders who build some serious or, or nearly serious machines. Uh, Strama MPS do not do this. So we have a lot of engineering expertise. This is also important for our strategy in China. Why? Because uh, at the beginning, uh, also with, uh, with the partners, we talked about hiring some guys. Uh, it's not that easy because in, in, in this world of machine area, we need uh, guys who stay very long at Strama MPS because the topic of engineering, of engineering special proposed machines, is very, 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 um, yeah, you need a, a lot of know-how, a lot of competence, and a lot of time to stay in this market and to be successful. 
So what we want to be in the future, we want to be a complete solution partner in each uh, side of the world, in China, in USA or North America, so we call it, and also in Europe. And the, the topic uh, in, in everywhere you hear about this is uh, digitalization and so forth. Also in machine building, the industrial 4.0 is also a big, big topic uh, we have to deal with in the future to be uh, a good partner on the market. Therefore, we also create some digital services. In which business fields we are now uh, some, some partner for our um, for our customers. The, the biggest one is the e-mobility, also e-mobility strategy in China. Uh, we, we discussed a lot in our strategy times the five years plan of China government. There I also read that, that uh, sustainability is one big topic also for China. So e-mobility will also be a big topic for China and we delivered uh, these days also a lot of machine and equipment and e-mobility to China. Uh, a general topic is, is automation technology, is also for, for automotive industry, uh, especially for automotive industry, um, there for, for, for sensor equipments, or also for the future uh, topics with autonomous driving. Then we have a department of medical technology, um, also a future market, also a future market we think for China. Why? Because the population in China also becomes more rich. Uh, and when a population becomes more rich, they need more more health care, they want more health care, they, they want to, to live more healthier. And because of this, the equipment and the smart uh, medical uh, products uh, will also rise up and we have a big market, we think, there. Then uh, a traditional topic is our machine centers. We also build special test rigs and uh, a part uh, where we have also challenge with China, a lot of is the part body in white. In the part body in white, it's not that uh, core competence uh, necessary, like in, in, in other um, areas, so body in white, it's not that, that um, yeah, in body in white, you, you need not, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit more, um, a little bit more not that difficult machine uh, assembly uh, product uh, and therefore we, we recognize a lot of Chinese competitors these days. So now I show you a short video clip. In this video clip you see some, some move, moved pictures um, of our production systems. For example here you see uh, battery modules, it's for BMW in this case. Also some, some medtech products, also the pandemic uh, was one field we were in. So digital services, simulation and stuff like this. Also virtual commissioning is a big topic. Automation for sensor equipment. You see here some pictures, machine centers, like I mentioned, special machine centers. Here the body in white field with our uh, partner Fanuc. Fanuc is one of our greatest partners uh, in this field and here we have some special test rigs, only some pictures here from Strama MPS that you can mention what we do. So here you see in this, uh, in this video that the technique is really complex and therefore why the technique and the competence is really complex. Um, we think that uh, China will be a big market also for us with our Chinese location and because it's not that easy that you can copy these things we do uh, there. So one last point here, um, I mentioned BMW is one of our big partners, BMW also BBA, uh, it's a part in China where we deliver our products, also Continental in, in Shanghai is one big partner in the last years. This is all of the, the automotive industry, but these days um, the, the non-automotive sector will also be in focus, especially in the China strategy. Um, for example, we did a big project these days with Deutsche Bahn. We are very glad to, to deal there with Deutsche Bahn 
and Deutsche Bahn, Deutsche Bahn Engineering and Consulting is also a partner for international train services. Therefore, it will be also a marked in the, in the Asia, Asian region. So now the strategy, the, the title is, now I mentioned a lot of things about Strama MPS. So why do I do this? Because I think to, to understand the strategy of the future, you have to be in, in, in focus what Strama MPS do and what is the, the main core competence of Strama MPS to understand this. So for sure, um, we have four big topics in the future. It's the first time I also said it's digitization. Digitization in the fields of machine building is one great aspect for, for future topics. So especially for Corona and also in the strategy of China is digitization a big topic. Why is this so? Because we have to work together uh, with a virtual, um, in a, on a virtual ne network or on a virtual backbone we have. Um, because traveling around the world is not that easy. Um, corona let us know this uh, these days. So digitization also in connection and in working together with virtual commissioning and stuff like this and simulation is very, very important. Then new work, of course, why new work? New work, we want to be a modern, a modern company like you see it in my background, a modern company for, for future employees employees, uh, we need the best employees on the market, so therefore we need a good environment, a digital, uh, uh, a good environment for them uh, that they want to work uh, with us. Uh, yeah. So then other types I mentioned also sustainability and new business and for sure the global network. Then at, at least let me say something about China in detail. So China, we are sitting there uh, near Taizang, it, uh, near Shanghai, it's in Taizang. Um, we have also an assembly area of 5,000 square meters there. And in, uh, in Shanghai, uh, in Taizang, there was a foundation in 2011. Uh, we went there because our big customers went there and our big customers want that we are next to their doors. Like BMW, our Continental, want that drama MPS can uh, deliver good service services and stuff like this. So we went uh, to China in 2011. So now in 2020, the last step, uh, we, we, or 18, we, we reached an, a revenue of 100 million RMB. And the next step is to increase. But increasing in China is very difficult, I think, these days. And therefore, you need an agile strategy. This is our, again, our, our employee number now. Uh, but to increase further, we have a lot of, yeah, a lot of market um, and, and environment topics we have to check uh, how we can go. So these, these changes can be chances also. And these are some, some bullet points uh, of our strategy deployment. We also did this uh, together with Shara Long Hu, the last the last months. So what, what do we have? We have, uh, like I said, new markets, new markets also for, for China, like railroad or also medical stuff. Uh, we also, like I said, uh, in, in, in the body and white sector, we re recognized new Chinese competitors, really strong competitors. And I also think the Chinese market for machine builder is very, very good. Um, but uh, you can find some ways to, to have a co-competence with them. So we want to be, like I said, a supplier and a problem solver, not only a machine deliverer. Then the green production, like I said, sustainability is the future, also in machine building. Um, we have rising wages, rising wages and employees in Germany as well as in China. Um, we have the supply chain topics uh, or the supply chain challenges, like I mentioned it here. Um, we have new customer needs, uh, especially in China and in Asia not the machine and the mechanical machine is in the uh, is the, is the topic or the thing the the guys want to buy uh, it's all about software it's all about user experience and these are things the chinese guys and also chinese employees are very good so software can be also one focus for us in china to develop the software there um, china yes of course is one of the leading uh, economic powers and we have a lot of 
a lot of people who lead a lot of production, a lot of uh, products there, so also a market for our production lines. Then there's the Chinese five-year plan I mentioned. Uh, is one topic is the green, the sustainability of the country. But another thing is also the isolation or the cooperation, like we see now with the economic war between USA and also China, what happens there. And yes, the, the chips shortage and the independent strategy of China is also one big topic who uh, we have to, to deal with in strategy. So therefore, this, this, this bullet points we, we discussed a lot in the last in the last uh, month, and we recognize, like I said, that the market is very agile. You cannot you cannot do any strategy now like the last last years. You do strategy planning for five years, for six years, and also when you look at the teaching books, and also when you come from university, everybody says uh, build up your strategy for five years, for six years, for seven years, and focus this plan. Um, we are not, I think, in this position uh, that we can do this. So our our plan is more than in Scrum mode. I, I mentioned it, a strategy in Scrum mode. So you have to to uh, to change your strategy each half a year. I think you have to be you have you need an an, an focus, uh, a small focus uh, where you want to go, but you have to 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 check it each half a year. You have to be flexible, and like I said, I think for the for the future cooperation with German and Chinese companies is that we have a good network and an international organization. Also, one one big topic, and I'm glad to discuss it afterwards with you, are the employees. I think uh, this only works when you have an, an intercultural competence in your company and you have a trustful cooperation. I heard a lot of times, oh, what happens there in China? What what do the government do? Um, I do want, I, I don't want to 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 have this, yeah, not trustful um, partnership in our company. We need a trustful cooperation. When there is no trustful cooperation in a company, I think each German machine builder should, should stop, should uh, immediately stop their business in in China when you cannot do this. So yeah, uh, then you have to focus on interdisciplinary engineering, also bring competence to China and also trust the engineers there. Network, I said, and cooperation, and of course, uh, create uh, employee loyalty. You have to be one big family all over the world. This is a soft fact. You, you, may, you, you recognize here perhaps there are a lot of soft facts. There are no facts. This is to do this. There are soft facts. And I think the soft facts to create this culture, this culture in one, when one company and together with German and, and Chinese com, uh, culture, this is one, one very, very important uh, thing for the future. So you have also to be adaptable. Um, like, like I said, there is the, the trade war. Uh, with USA and China, and uh, we will see what happens in the in the in the foreign cooperation with uh, Germany and China. But you have to be adaptable. First of all, uh, the production side in China have to be standalone uh, standalone product unit uh, when there are some some regulation for cooperate with international partners. So. This is one big topic to build up a standalone production unit from concept to service. I mentioned it here, but also, like I said, you have to build up a digital network to do the digital know-how transfer and collaboration by, by digital platforms, by digital engineering platforms and, and stuff like this to be successful. And you need a trustful and a, and a self-responsible loyal management team also in China. I always talk or uh, often talk to some some guys from Germany and they, they say, uh, especially in the management, we have to, in the last years, we have to control, we have to rule the, the management in China. This, this do not work. You need a strong partner, a strong management partner. You have to talk to them in the same level uh, like here in Germany we do. And if you can't do this a business in China, I think will never work. Yeah, then make a combination, uh, a combination of the of the of the things of the accuracy of the German accuracy, and of the Chinese manpower, speed and flexible uh, flexibility, and this I think creates added value in in terms of cost, time and quality. 
And last point is what I want to give uh, on your way for the future strategy planning is uh, you need a, a specific cooperation also in business uh, and increase their your, your market advantage for the future things. This was some some inputs of my side, what we deal with in our strategy, not in detail on the high level scale, like I said to you, if you have some further question, uh, feel free and contact me to each time. Uh, thank you for your audience. Yeah, thank you, Martin, uh, for your presentation. I still can remember 2011 when I first met uh, Mr. Petsko and Mr. Witte, mm -hmm. two general managers of uh, Strama MPS uh, who uh, found uh, China a subsidiary as well. And uh, glad to see that uh, you have a very good development in China and also feel honored to accompany you to developing a future strategy. Uh, the core message of Martin's speech is uh, as we can all get is we need a China strategy let's say 2025 but we need to have an open attitude and uh, to be agile to uh, always question our strategy developed and uh, adapt to then the real situation then yeah and never would you please show the uh, slides of uh, panel discussion because we know uh, the strategy topic is a very complex one and um, we can uh, really not only listen to one company's uh, experience, that's why we invite uh, further experts to form today's panel. And uh, we have uh, in total four experts and we have a roughly one hour time. But we are aware of that uh, we cannot cover all the topics uh, about the strategy development for your future China business in within this one hour. So some guiding questions which we are answer are why to take China as a field of innovation and how to recruit and develop your product design and engineering team and uh, how to uh, cooperate with other partners to set up uh, a competent and uh, a powerful after sales network which is uh, very relevant to machinery uh, companies yeah and uh, our webinar today is uh, targeting you as deciders from machinery medium size and small size companies in germany but also in europe and uh, please feel free to raise your question also in uh, our chat room and me but also never will take care of your questions and and uh, your questions are very uh, welcome. And uh, please also set, step into our discussion today. And first of all, I would like to introduce to you uh, Ms. Uh, Chang Fang Wang. She is founder of China um, Expert Service, uh, CES. And uh, with today's moderation, I hope I could qualify for her uh, for his uh, for her high level expert network. Maybe we can have a, a separate discussion later on. Looking forward for a cooperation with you then. And her um, expertise um, of about 13 years uh, working experience are in automation, in warehouse technology, uh, corporate strategy and uh, digitalization in, in China. So Chang Fan, um, my question to you is so what's your company do and what experience do you have in China? Yeah, so thank you Xiaolong for your uh, brief introduction. So uh, I'm Chang Fan and uh, I started roughly Digital China Europe Network in 2018 and uh, currently I'm the founder of China Expert Services. So we are uh, helping the Chinese high tech uh, SMEs expand to Europe uh, and at the same time uh, we help uh, uh, European high-tech SMEs uh, expand and digitize in China. Uh, as Xiaolong mentioned that uh, uh, China's government uh, has put a, a huge focus on digitalization initiatives. Um, so uh, we have experts in the network ranging from uh, IoT, robotics, um, big data, uh, autonomous driving uh, and so on. So uh, we we are um, we aim to provide a educational uh, program for those uh, German and European high tech companies who are interested in expanding to China. 
Okay, thank you, Chang Fan. So you are clearly an uh, expert in terms of digitization and innovation today, and thank you for coming. And uh, I will introduce to you Dr. Liu Tianyu. Tianyu is now uh, sitting in his quarantine hotel back from Germany to, to China to his working location. And uh, um, I assume he's very happy gonna to leave the quarantine hotel on Friday. And Tianyu has... Um, uh, more than uh, 15 years work experience in China, half of it uh, working as a management consultant and supporting European machinery uh, SMEs and uh, expanding their business in China. Afterwards, he uh, switched the site and uh, working um, for machinery companies as uh, uh, CEOs, also other in other uh, leading positions. Today, um, he is heading for Stapin Eifler uh, Vocatic, uh, and as general manager, he is responsible for um, business development and sales. And Tianyu, uh, I, w I have a special question to you then, as we know each other for a long time. What kind of consulting project did you do 10 years ago for German mechanical engineering uh, customers? I mean, I mean, first of all, thanks a lot for Xiaolong and also the China, and this is the China team. I mean, to bring us together, so we have this wonderful platform to communicate. It's um, uh, so my name is Tian Yu, and uh, so there was a, it was really a good question. So it was uh, for ten years ago, I, I back to China as so 2004. I starting my consulting career from 2007. Yeah, so it's uh, for seven years. It was uh, regarding the question about the ten years like, consulting period. It's uh, it was uh, uh, it's a very interesting topic. We have a uh, we have a transfer trans, uh, changeover. So from 2007 to 2010, I mean the first three years. So it's kind of all my consulting is based on uh, there was two topics. One is uh, is um, uh, low country low cost country sourcing. So this so uh, this uh, type of uh, uh, sourcing projects for the for the for the for the for the, for the German customers mainly from automotive. I mean that is a low cost country sourcing, which is very simple. So China from uh, sourcing from China, but later on you know that was uh, China is not low-cost country sourcing anymore. So, so and another type of uh, uh, consulting uh, that is for the first three years is uh, for this uh, strategic sourcing uh, for this also for the German firm. What it means for strategic sourcing, uh, which is means uh, 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 so more the key topics for the localization and for the German firm, which is in China, I mean how to transfer the technology from Europe. So that is uh, my first three years as consulting period. It was uh, why I said it was a changeover because after 2010 we find it out it's really hard and hard. I mean to have this similar project and anymore because one hand side, so there was a uh, China is a low cost country sourcing anymore. I mean on the other hand side is uh, most of our customers has already set up. Uh, I mean clearly strategic sourcing uh, strategies in China and also I mean the the localization is more like. It's so quite complete. I mean, for the automotive for 2010, because uh, from there was a 2007 to 2010 was an exact period, high speed development period for automotive in that. My uh, consulting uh, background of transfer is to the uh, to the supporting. I mean, the German SME executive for SME machinery companies, I mean, to hating for China and for business entry. So what it means for business entry is very simple. There was uh, uh, to 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 find out what is the target market, and uh, to build up what kind of setup. I mean to supporting, and to uh, to formulate business plan for this for for the China market, and to set up what is the typical setup into supporting the the business entry for the for the customer to the China market. So this is uh, and since then I'm working for the consulting period, and then jump to the jump to the customers also do the similar things. Basically, so my roles in China for the last 10 years is uh, very specified. Is kind of a new business development in China, either in consulting period or either later on. Yeah, thank you, uh, Tianyu. I think your consulting experience uh, uh, from 2007 to 2014, it's uh, very uh, valuable information uh, to give us uh, a, a look back, so to say, about machinery uh, industry in China at that time. So for German uh, uh, companies, uh, firstly, they step out of the market and take China as a sourcing, sourcing market and then step into the Chinese market. And uh, after China, uh, 20, uh, 2000, 
2014, now uh, another guest came in, Martin Kovacic. And before I raise the question to, to Martin Kovacic, may I introduce Martin to you? And uh, Martin uh, developed engineering teams in East Europe, but also in China. Uh, very exciting was his experience to design a mid-tech product, a machine product, and within only a half of no normal project time, together with a not experienced team. Um, of course, it is in China. And in his last position, at Mans AG, he was responsible for three engineering sites in Slovakia, in uh, Italy, but also in Germany. I would uh, tell you a secret. His passion is still to develop Chinese market. And that's why he is today here with us and is willing to support you in need. So Martin, my question to you is uh, between 2014 and 2020, just right after uh, the experience uh, Tianyu get uh, from the consulting uh, period, and uh, you are located to between 14 and 20 in China as responsible uh, engineering department leaders and VP engineering. And uh, how did the mechanical engineering market in China change between 2014 and 2020? Thank you, Xiaolong, uh, for the introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning in Germany, good afternoon in China. Uh, yeah, this is right. I, I have spent seven years in China and uh, let's, the question was like, what, what changed, right? So the transformation, I think uh, Martin Ebna already said the big transformation which happened is digital transformation. That's, that's a very big trend which happened and which had an enormous impact also on mechanical engineering industry. And the second one was just, you uh, mentioned the transformation of economy. The economy transformation from the low cost economy to the knowledge based economy. And uh, where I look and where I see the big change is the change of the local experts. Due to this change to the knowledge-based economy, a lot of or much bigger amount of experts are right now available on chain Chinese market than it was before. So this is great. The talents are not only there, but they are also very well developed in the meantime, which was not the case before. So this is very, very big change. And where you can see also, if you are looking at the suppliers, is the confidence. They are confident. They are totally different confident than, than they were before. Also the employees, the employees are now really a partners to the German developers. Yeah? They are not anymore just executors of the ideas from Europe. They are very, very able to contribute to the development. So these are, in my opinion, this is the biggest change which, which happened. Okay, look at today and Changfan, um, what kind of trend do you see in near future, I think in your, in your specialized area, automated warehousing market in China? Yeah, so um, what I see actually from the period of 2015 to 20, so last uh, five to six years, um, China in the area of automated warehousing market had a leapfrog. So uh, just to put this in context, so in Europe, uh, so majority of the leaders in this automated warehouse industry, they're from Europe and Jap Japan and uh, America, but a lot of them are Europeans. So top three, um, they have 85 years experience to 200 years of experience in automation in the warehousing. <laughs> And the Chinese uh, players, they had like in the past 20 years development in this area. And uh, so in the first 15 years from 2000 to 2015, um, they, there's uh, like a catching up going on um, because they didn't have anything. So they are following the footsteps of European companies and American and uh, Japanese. 
But starting in 2015, uh, there is a leapfrog uh, in terms of jumping into the next uh, era of uh, automation using robotics, uh, because robotics automation actually provides a more, flex more flexibility. Um, so one example of that is uh, in the area of parcel sortation. So in Europe, traditionally, a lot of parcel sortation centers are equipped with sorters, so fixed automation equipment. And in roughly there's a company in Hangzhou. Um, so the, the person actually actually studied in Germany as a PhD, but he went back to China and he uh, invented a robotic solution concept, which is based on robots, uh, very flexible and very scalable. You don't need to put a lot of investment up front. So that gives the Chinese customers who don't have so much money to invest in automation in the beginning, uh, the opportunity to taste automation. And that's how this company expanded. And now the company actually is uh, like coming also to Europe and also to the other markets like U the US as well. So definitely, I think I see like the leapfrogging in China in terms of automation, like really rethinking how you can provide uh, flexible automation in the warehouse industry. And uh, another thing in China is like, um, in the low automation segment, there's only 13 represent 13 percent of the total automation market um, because um, uh, this low automation is basically picking with software. And um, in Europe, you have like 33 percent. So majority of the automation currently in warehousing market in China is actually in the mid to high automation. This is huge uh, mid automation market there, and then with um, growing high automation uh, like segments right now. So I think going forward, uh, China is going to um, continue to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, have this uh, um, new automation, modern, more modernized automation uh, technologies instead of like fixed uh, automation equipment, which we see here in the past hundred years. So uh, that's what I see. And then they also they are really took, taking on new business models. So, for example, you can rent, uh, you can uh, rent for your peak season to handle certain order picking. Uh, you can uh, pay per pick or pay per performance. So all these newer business models are being already uh, adopted by Chinese companies. Uh, they are very open uh, to these uh, like uh, newer methods of uh, um, automation business models. Yeah, thank you, Chanfang. <clears throat> Let me recap what you have also um, uh, told us. And it's very interesting to uh, review this, what you just uh, contributed in the last minutes, you all three. And first of all, we listened to uh, Tianyu um, European machinery company take China as a sourcing market and later on as production market and uh, in, few, uh, in the years uh, around 2010 and step into the Chinese market to have own location. And Martin said uh, a Chinese um, machinery company uh, or Chinese machinery industry is getting more competent because of uh, more experts are available. And um, Changfang, you indicate that uh, Chinese companies are even innovating and do some new business models and step into the European market as well. Although uh, your experience are in the uh, warehousing automation area, but I think this is uh, can be also reflect to the all other machinery area as well, um, as we are all um, do business in this uh, this industry. We we know this uh, this trend, and uh, back to our topic. Now we need to uh, develop our own uh, strategy. We we know the quick developing market as we uh, just refresh it in our webinar, and uh, we know the dynamic of the Chinese market. And if you just sit 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 down and uh, would like to uh, develop your own strategy. It's always a uh, difficult thing. A uh, difficulty uh, you you are you are going to face is you you have the feeling you don't have you don't have enough information. So I raise next question to Martin Apner, and uh, what kind of market information was important for you as you developed your China strategy, and uh, what was uh, difficult to obtain? What kind of information was important but very difficult to to, to receive? I think, uh, the, like I mentioned also in my presentation, is uh, the government five years plan, and it was also very good that we have some some Chinese colleagues 
here in the strategy development like you, Xiaolong Hu, some guys from China who explain this information to us. What do uh, Chinese government mean with this plan? What are the consequences for uh, international business in China? Is there an international business? Uh, is there a cooperation with Europe or not? Uh, and how do we have to uh, react uh, here uh, in our location in, in China? And because we have a deeper understanding of this uh, Chinese plan, not explained from a Western Europe or from Europe guy, not explained uh, from a US guy, or, but explained from Chinese guys, who know the, the culture, who know the mentality of Chinese persons. This was very important for us and we did this uh, PESTEL analysis uh, and one, one concrete topic uh, where we understand the, the, the future, uh, yeah, the, the future plan of, of Chinese government for the, for the next five years. And therefore we can also create our business and pick up our special uh, market uh, topics where the, the, the German uh, quality is, is uh, not, uh, yeah, where, where the German quality can be a, a good marketplace for, for China, uh, even when everybody speaks about uh, trade wars and, and stuff like this. I think so, why we have this deep understanding, we can develop this product. So the five years plan is my answer. To the, have the Chinese development, the real Chinese development of a five year plan. Mm. Yeah, I think the lessons learned of our session, Martin, it was not planned that you promoted our work. Thank you very much. But uh, the, the core message is uh, we have to uh, define, uh, you had defined uh, business segment and within a business segment then, then uh, try to find all information relating to this business segment and then based on that you can develop your strategy because the market is too big and uh, it's too complex. If, uh, you cannot take it all uh, as, as SMEs. Um, Therefore, you need to pick something out. It's it's correct, but never nevertheless, which business segment you uh, you take uh, take care of. Uh, but uh, there's one area you always have to uh, dealing with are the competitors. Yeah, and you always need to collect information about the competitors. And uh, question to. Uh, to Martin, this time Dr. Martin, <laughs> Dr. Martin, um, um, what competitive situation what did you find in China in 2014? And uh, how many Chinese uh, companies you didn't know um, before that? This is, uh, this is, uh, thank you for this question. We were talking about this before, Xiaolong, you know, my experience of, of Chinese competitors, like uh, there is the story where I, when I went to China, I, I used to be there with a company called Mafei Technologies. And, and uh, we were producing injection molding machines. So uh, as I came to China, I, I clearly knew the market. I was already five years working for the company. So I was clear we have, have like four main competitors and like on the world there are 30 to 35 and other competitors so it was clear for me and then i came to china and uh my first visit of the world fair in shanghai where was the huge exhibition and when i found there another company i i, I never seen so i was asking my my co like what is this is it a dealer or what is that no 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 this is this is a local chinese uh producer of the injection molding machine i was okay good so and he produced and then i was really amazed about the numbers and then i went five meters further and i found another one and another one at the end of the day on the dinner i have a list and on the list there was 86 companies 86 companies I have never heard before. So this was a big, big shock for me. Like that was big experience. And uh, the, the talk was at the dinner when I was talking with my guys and asking like, guys, this is something is wrong. This is, this cannot be like normal competitors. This is too much. They were like, no, Martin, they are, that's, that's not a garage companies. These are companies which made it to the world trade fair. 
these are really good companies. There are many others which which didn't manage it to so so high. So this is uh, what I say. This is like the iceberg where, when you see only the the top. But if you go deeper and deeper in Chinese market, you can see the companies and the understanding of Chinese market with the biggest experience I got in China during my seven years over there. Yeah, you can see how big is the Chinese market and how many competitors that you can be facing in, in China. Um, but some of the machinery uh, producers from Germany will still lie back and sit back and say, oh, they are not uh, competitive enough. It's only uh, strength in numbers, so to say. Yeah. But what, what about today, uh, Chang Fang? And uh, how has the, I think, the... Um, competitiveness uh, about uh, uh, in, in the automated warehouse market change in China over the last five years in, in terms of competitiveness of the Chinese uh, producers? Yeah, so, um, well, over the, let's say, past uh, 10 years, uh, five to 10 years, uh, a lot of Chinese uh, local companies in this uh, automated warehouse industry they definitely increased the product quality um, and the solution com competence. Solution competence, I mean, system integration competence. Uh, prior to that, um, there are not a lot of Chinese companies. They don't have the product and they don't have the competence to integrate anything in the automation uh, sector. So, um, so yes, now actually, um, uh, last year, uh, four, six out of four, top 10 competitors, uh, uh, top players in this market in China, they are actually Chinese. Um, 10 to uh, 20 years ago, I think number, number uh, maybe one or two Chinese. So so you can see that actually uh, there are more and more local Chinese uh, companies who are becoming a lot more competitive. Of course, they have price advantage. Uh, they are typically 30 to 50 percent cheaper than the uh, international players uh, from Europe, Jap Japan. And um, but they also provide a uh, um, better customer service. Uh, so Chinese companies, they have typically lower hourly rate if you go to the site uh, of the customer. And they also provide uh, additional things like free offer for the first year or like you can uh, have like uh, 24 hour service in double 11. So they offer these uh, um, let's say special services to their customers, especially Chinese customers. And that's how they actually become more competitive compared to the international players who have a more standard offering. And then also in the area of uh, innovation, the Chinese uh, um, local companies are more open-minded. So one company, they cooperated with Ali Cloud on cloud computing and uh, IoT. So they can, you can monitor your, let's say a Chinese tobacco factory from raw material until finished goods, um, end to end, and across multiple factories in China. And this is something that a lot of uh, international players, they don't uh, currently, uh, they, they, they think about developing digital services uh, for this uh, market, but they, they typically takes them longer time in order to roll this out because they want to make sure it's perfect when it's you know being rolled out. But whereas the Chinese companies, they already started. So, yeah, I get that. Um, many strong, powerful competitors today. And uh, may I look at Tianyu then? Poor you. You have uh, the task to develop the market for a European brand and uh, with uh, a large number of powerful uh, competitors from China. And may you answer my question. Uh, why do Chinese customers today still continue to buy your products, uh, which are designed in Europe? Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting question, right? This is the question I'm always asking myself as well. Yeah. First of all, I have a, I mean, I have a different opinion with uh, with the Dr. Dr. Martin. <laughs> so uh, in most of the China market, it's uh, it's kind of very fragile. So there's a uh, one German thing that was. Uh, uh, so you can always find a find a find a market which is you are the king in there. 
So which just means uh, you find it really, I mean, to really know so where you should hate it. So there was a kind of a niche, niche, niche. So then it will be somewhere. So you are the, the only one you can make such kind of products. So it's really, you cannot see, I mean, uh, for example, for yours, so injection molding is a, is a, it's a, it's a huge product portfolio for the plastic injection molding, but 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 for different application, it definitely has a different just uh, uh, plastic injection molding is a broad topic. So I'm pretty sure. So in maybe in one or two applications, so your company is the king. I mean, is a really a technology technology leader for that. So that is also the the question. The first question you ask. I mean, so how to make the China strategy? So this is I'm really always uh, always uh, feel uh, it's a hot topic. So the first strategy you have to make, you need to know which market you need to hate, which market you need to develop. So for this uh, uh, there was a general topic, automotive market is big, medical market is big, but based on your product portfolio in automotive, you are maybe it's only niche, niche, niche. So down to which sections is your market? So this is you really need to, 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 to have to find it out. It's not only it was a copy paste from, from Europe to China sometimes. So, so this is one thing. Another thing is uh, for, for my case, so right now I'm, I'm setting the PPD machines uh, for, the, for the cutting tools applications and for the molding tools applications, which is using for machinery, for toolings. And uh, so I can see it was uh, luckily we have, uh, we have uh, quite a lot of local competitors. So there was a market like this one. So uh, the Chinese competitors, I mean, still in the low end. I mean, so they have uh, maybe it's a similar to the injection molding, maybe not in that number because the market not that big. Of course, I can easily to pick up more than 10 competitors from local China market. But unfortunately, wise. Uh, so this, uh, I mean, this kind of a technology need to have long-term in-house development experience. I mean, so really, this is uh, for, especially for the for the recipe. So this really takes a long time to develop. It's not that easy to copy paste. So there were the most of the Chinese competitors are still serving. I mean, the low cost coating, sir, coating, okay. and uh, the market from 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 the China for the machinery industry, there was a clearly the trend. So there was a. Uh, the local, I mean, the local tool, I mean, the local tooling seller. So they want to upgrade their product portfolios in a higher brand. So they need to have this uh, represent uh, still I mean, the technology leaders for the coding service. Still, for they need to have our technology and they need to have our good machines. I mean, can run the perfect coding for them. So then they can represent in the higher, uh, in the higher market side. I mean, I can give uh, many many examples for that for that to, to supporting this 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 topic. So then. Uh, to my opinion, there was uh, I'm uh, so in for the for for Afro Vacotech, so we are still competing with uh, with uh, with uh, technology leaders in the European. I mean, mainly from 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 Swiss and from 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 Deutschland, and uh, and uh, so that is uh, uh, in the in the in the top angle for the top technology, and uh, luckily for that was uh, I think this is also the transition period for China, so they they. They need to upgrade their tech, upgrade their product portfolio in that region. So the demand in China market also strong. So this is I have to say. Okay, that you say um, SMEs, you you are in a lucky position, as especially the small size companies because you are niche, and you are premium, and um, but we still have uh, some bigger sized medium companies. Uh, they need to. Uh, think about their future business uh, development. They are not so in, in not so lucky situation like you, Tianyu. You are uh, <laughs> still tiny uh, in, in, a, in a fast growing segment and can be positioned as a, as a, some special niche uh, providers. And uh, therefore, um, maybe some companies uh, they think about to. Uh, develop uh, to design local products and to use China as a field of innovation and so on. And um, but uh, therefore you need also a team, a competent team to do uh, the transformation, uh, if I can call it as a transformation from taking the Euro uh, in European design products and sell in China to uh, design uh, products in China and even innovate. And the question to Martin, Dr. Martin, then how to recruit and develop your product design team and engineering team in China. So you have a very long experience there and uh, you are the right people to ask the question for. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Uh, how to recruit. I'm, I'm not a professional recruiter, but 
basically the question could be like how to attract the talents, how to attract the talents in China and uh, how to also keep the talents in China. I think I would use uh, the starting speech of Martin Ebner. He mentioned very well and very clearly uh, that the focus of Strama MPS is people and also on development of the people towards intercultural competence. And this is very important because this is something what can attract a cultural uh, company. This is something what is very unique, which you cannot find in, in the majority of the local company. So this is really attracting. And then how to retain, how to retain the people. And uh, there is this very uh, popular myth of the fluctuant Chinese employees, right? Uh, which I can say in seven years, I my team raised from two people to 56. And during the seven years, my fluctuation rate of my team was definitely below 3%. So this is something if you really approach the culture correctly. May I jump in 3%? That means one people, one guy. It's just Martin. Uh, 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 like per year. Yes. Per year. Oh, I'll that see. Means, okay. That means seven, that means seven, seven guys per, per, per so this is This is round about the number. Yeah. So uh, that's correct. And this is... Uh, like if you if you really live this 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 culture and this approach the people written they want to want to work with you uh, and the following question is also like how to connect them with your uh, with your German headquarter yeah how to connect it correctly so that you can because this is something what can give you an advantage if you have only local team in China and only local team in Germany this is okay. This is what Mogni plays. But if you are able to connect these two teams, you can create added value, which can give you advantage at the market. And finally, you can have really something extra, which where you can really compete with international companies, but also with the local companies. Yeah. So to find this way, how to connect them, this is the pro way to go yeah uh, thank, you for, um, thank <laughs> you for your for your answer and uh, um, I we, we got the, clearly your message uh, how to re, uh, re, um, uh, retain them how to uh, connect them with the headquarters but uh, we missed the message about how to attract them because of the connection it was in that time or not uh, so stable can you just oh. quick repeat uh, how to con how to attract uh, talent how, how to how to attract? You can attract the, the people just with the being of international company. This is really something what is what is unique and what, what is differentiating you uh, from the local companies and especially with the culture, with the culture which is truly international, where you will value also the local competence of the people, but will also bring them the, the, the view of internationality. The connection to the foreign experts, the possibility to get the training outside or right now even virtually, uh, like right now really the travels, uh, travel restrictions are very difficult and I used to do quite a lot of exchange and exchange must be also both. I had best experience if we, if German trainers traveled to China, Chinese experts travel to Germany, and this continuous exchange was very good, of course, not, not possible just like this, but still we have we have um, very good digital technologies and the digital transformation is there, so why not use it? Mm. Yeah, uh, talking about digital transformation, and uh, it's a, a kind of innovation in many areas. And question to Changfang, why to take uh, China as a field of uh, innovation for uh, European SMEs? And I mean, it's not enough just to innovate in 
Das ist Straubing. <lacht> ah, Chang you are muted. Sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah, so first thing is definitely like the Chinese customers, they are very, very open um, to digital technologies and uh, trying out new products um, uh, powered by AI and big data. Uh, also in uh, um, not just in consumer um, industry, but also uh, more and more in the industrial and manufacturing sector. Um, so, okay, so I, I'll give you an example, like last year in China in 2020, when the Corona started, it's not particularly in the industrial sector, but um, there, um, there are a lot of uh, uh, robotics companies, they are thinking about how they can uh, reduce the contact between humans um, in quarantine hotel. And so Alibaba, for example, they uh, took it took them, I think, a month or so to develop uh, delivery robots, um, which delivers meals and uh, um, towels and toothpaste and such things to the guest room who is being uh, in the quarantine hotel. So um, and uh, and then later on, uh, when the COVID situation became better, um, many, many hotels in China started to adopt such a uh, uh, robotics delivery for their guests. A lot of five star hotels, um, they are already having this. And then looking into this year, um, a lot of restaurants also started to adopt this uh, delivery robots for the restaurant. Um, and um, so so basically the Chinese uh, companies and customers, uh, they're extremely uh, open to such newer technologies. Um, in Germany, um, I know a friend of mine, he also started uh, um, selling these delivery robots in the German restaurants because currently uh, what's uh, the pinpoint here is that they cannot find staff uh, because some staff already left during when COVID started uh, in the restaurant sector. So, um, so I mean, the, the reason to adopt Germany is different uh, than in China. In China, um, okay, there's the pinpoint to reduce human contact, but then people are also very enthusiastic about adopting such things. So if you innovate and develop some new product in China, you're sure gonna find you know people who want to try out and like these uh, um, uh, first uh, like adopters, and you'll find plenty of them. And then the secondly is the like, speed of development of product in China is uh, very fast. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, um, here in Germany, uh, usually companies will uh, develop and test and uh, for a long period of time until they're satisfied before they roll out. And in China, it's just much faster. So uh, for example, when Alipay Pay came out um, to the market, it's not perfect. Uh, it is actually uh, has lots of bugs and also uh, maybe security concern uh, problems, but it doesn't matter. So the Chinese customer try it out and then they give feedback to the Ali and then they you know improve the products over time and now it's uh, like bulletproof so so many customers are paying using alipay it's not a problem anymore so um chinese companies and also if you are in china you can co-create it with your customer instead of developing something yourself for many years until it's perfect uh, so in this way you can capture the market much faster so and thirdly a lot of multinational companies already treated china as a innovation center rather than a production site, uh, as some of the um, panelists already mentioned earlier. So for example, MEC, uh, they invested uh, in a Chinese startup called Sing, Sing, Sing Sense, uh, specializing AI chips. Um, and uh, so, and then also like one uh, company under Continental Engineering, uh, it's called uh, Fitesco Technologies. They just this month opened a new R&D center in Tianjin in China and uh, they will have like 500 employees there. So uh, a lot of multinationals already started treating China as a innovation center. And my previous employer, Andrew Kerber, Kerber in the area of machinery um, sector, they actually also were thinking about starting a China innovation hub in Shenzhen last year, but due to COVID it's postponed. And lastly, uh, government incentives in China. So, um, in 2018, um, the, the, the Tianjin government, they poured in 16 billion US dollars to set up an AI fund. Um, and in Germany, I read, I think uh, the latest number is that until 2025, uh, you, you're you going to have like roughly 5 billion uh, US dollars for AI innovation. So 
government in China is a big supporter of emerging technology and innovation. So you 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 for sure find so many different like industrial parks in China where they have different kind of schemes for uh, like German companies, innovative companies. So uh, you will get a lot of support from the Chinese government by going there as well. So. Yeah, thank you for your uh, uh, in-depth uh, introduction about uh, innovation power uh, in the Chinese location. And Martin, Martin Abner in this case, and what about the idea? Uh, you set up a design team in, in China and develop uh, delivery robots. And then with these uh, robots, uh, you can serve your Deutsche Bank customer and deliver the foods within the train. And uh, <laughs> could be a, could be a nice scenario. But the joke aside, and what uh, is your plan uh, ha um, to uh, use China as innovation location as well? Yes, like I said in my presentation, I think software, software in in machine building will be uh, more important in the future. Uh, it's all about software. In the last years, uh, only you look at the mechanically parts of an automation industry. But now the, the software development is one big, uh, yeah, one big topic for development. And I think, like uh, Chang Fang says, um, there are a lot of, uh, yeah, um, creative guys and also heads you can you can uh, get there in China when you have a good international culture, like Martin Kubacik said it. And when you combine this, I think you have a lot of workforce also in. In China, for example, for software development. Um, but uh, one one topic I want to repeat also, Martin Kovacic, is the the main important thing for this is one international culture to have also one good uh, international cooperating management team, also have a good management team uh, there, and also the management there have to give the same I call it tone from the top. Also, it's a tone from the COP, this, this culture identity, this core identity of an international global um, manufacturer. And then I think software development and user experience and stuff like this can be one, one good thing. Also, Chang Fang says, says this, is, this is also a little bit the Silicon Valley mentality, I, I, I would call it. Uh, you you'd explain, you, you build up some software solution like Alipay you mentioned, but it was not uh, the 100% the uh, um, product, but you, you reach the topic time to market. Uh, you you build up an, an software uh, with 80% and then you go with this software uh, also in machine machine building technology to your customer and develop it together with your customer uh, and do not wait till you have the 100%. And this is also a mentality which we should use in the Chinese in the Chinese market um, for for uh, future business. Yeah, thank you, Martin. And um, now I looked at uh, Tianyu again. Um, Tianyu, I understand your message uh, uh, in the previous question. Small is beautiful, yeah. And, uh, but you, you are not only lucky, uh, may I say that, and because uh, you have also limited resources to develop the Chinese market. For example, how to develop a, a powerful after-sales service network. This costs uh, money. And uh, as Chang Fang also introduced, uh, Chinese customers uh, sometimes uh, expect uh, special deals in after-sales areas. And uh, what's your plan to develop uh, your cooperation in this after sales uh, uh, market yeah so actually this is uh, this is my goal for i mean uh, for for 2020 uh, 2022 yeah so so as uh, as chang fang already said it was a good message so there was a uh, chinese competitors my supplying is not good enough products but they can do 24 hour service and uh, so our machine is a, is a, is a, is a part of a production line so the the buyer who buy our machines the the core thing for the for the thing for the customer there was uh, they they want to have the machine continuously running without breakage and without deadline so without uh, lossy for uh, several hours because this is will give uh, financial impact for the for the for the customer so 
So the, 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 the key needs from the customer that was, uh, they, they, they do want to have uh, the machines that can be maintained, can be well maintained, can be repaired, can be to, 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 to have uh, this 24 hours service. Which is uh, normally, as you know, the culture from from European country, which is not acceptable. Yeah, you know, so it's it's not feasible. Yeah, so this is a big challenge. So and also, which is uh, the big challenge for me right now. In the, I'm 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 right now is really on the on the on the on the status. I mean, to to build up my uh, my after sales service teams and uh, to build up the uh, warehouse stockage in in China. And uh, so I'm I'm on the way. I have the planning, the concrete planning for that. Uh, so uh, we will using the partnership from from uh, from 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 local dealers, and do to supporting us to, to to for the local after sales. So then come to the another question that was how how to I mean how to training the after sales people. I mean to be. I mean to be really, I mean understood. I mean the machines. I mean to can well maintain uh, this is uh, the, all the machines according to the customer service. So this is uh, uh, so this is another. I mean especially in the current situation for the COVID-19. So there was a, a clear blockage from from European. I mean the travel the travel entrance from the from the German expertise to China is really difficult. It's not that difficult to to send the Chinese engineers to be trained in in Germany side, but uh, vice, but the other direction is really hard. So there was another. The, uh, it's an interesting point. That was uh, we really need to have a strong software. I mean, I mean, so this kind of a visual training programs we need to set up. So this also need to be well developed I and mean, well planned for that, which is also obviously it's new. I mean, to the to the to 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 our company as well. So another thing is also because uh, we're sending the machine to the Chinese customers. So they were now the. Uh, so in the past, so they can have on-site uh, acceptance protocol. I mean, to 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 check how the machine is qualified or not. So, but right now this is also can be also blockage as well. So this is also need to be have the virtual acceptance protocol. I mean, how to build up. Uh, I mean, like the webinar. So this is a virtual uh, virtual acceptance protocol in an efficient ways is also necessary. So this is all these on-hand things. Uh, uh, is uh, is 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 uh, is uh, is right now is a uh, is a challenge for me, but uh, but all in all, so there was uh, my message to that was uh, you need to have a strong partner. I mean to support him to do the after sales service. Second, you you do need to have the warehouse locally, so this is also necessary. Third, all the third the I mean the third you need to have a good I mean the, the software solution to to connect your peoples from China to Germany. Need to be can be well connected for all the trainings for everything. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I can sense uh, the challenge you are facing. It's uh, not easy to deal all those issues within uh, a short time period, and. Uh, um, I wish you all the best. And we have uh, one question uh, out of uh, um, the uh, chat room. And uh, we only have a few minutes time, so I'm uh, motivating also other uh, participants. If you have any questions, uh, feel, feel, feel free to raise your questions. And uh, for the question we have now is, uh, we, uh, Patrick has uh, mentioned they have 30 people in China, only only sales team, and um, the product is sensors for industrial automation. And to Martin, especially Dr. Martin, Martin and uh, and uh, uh, Tianyu, um, um, please uh, provide a quick answer. Um, when do you think as the time is mature to set up a local R and D or engineering engineering team? Yeah, for me, it's not the case. Hi. Yeah. Please. Yeah, sorry. Oh. Yeah. In, uh, for me, there was uh, the current situation is, is right now still I mean, to finalize uh, the after sales service. I think the R and D team, I mean, the kind of innovation, the message from the customer needs from China to to Europe, I mean, to can be can be the joint R and D team with uh, with the European team. So this is long term. I believe it will be will be next three years or three years after. Yeah. I see. I see. Okay, Martin. For me, the answer is very short and quick. Yes, do it. Go for 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 the local R and D team. Go for local R and D team, definitely. You need a local R and D team. Of course, it's uh, uh, 
to recommend to to again make the bridge between the headquarters in West uh, and and your local experts. It's very worthwhile to to have some transition period and have there maybe some, some experts, but for very limited time to to utilize to qualify the guys to understand the culture so that you can build up the real international culture in your company in China. So and then then it can roll out. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. I think this is a question which is not easy to be answered in a quick manner, but uh, in general, one to three years, uh, as you can realize from Martin and from uh, from Tianyu's uh, quick answer. And if you need any further question, uh, any answer, uh, Patrick, um, I can connect you later on with those two uh, experts. And uh, we have a further question from Stefan. Uh, how to find a partner which are, is, uh, are not willing to copy you later? And uh, maybe this is question to Tianyu again, and maybe Changfang, you have also other idea how to find a partner uh, who is not gonna to copy you. Ah, oh, so it's very easy for me. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, I'm, 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 I'm right now. I'm, I'm planning. I mean, to 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 have the partner, which is um, uh, uh, we are serving the same customer base, and uh, our product volumes is add-on product volume for them. So, for example, it was for the machine tools. So they have uh, machine tools. They have they need coating. They also need to have this uh, resolvent. And they also need to have this oiling to to lower the refriction to the machining. So we are serving the same customer base. So they they I mean for this uh, this is a uh, refriction oil companies that they have already vet well all set up in the in China market. They have already successful after sale service teams. They can make a 24 hour service. They have a calling call. They have already set up everything. They only do not have not serving for these technologies. So and I'm pretty sure they will never to copy paste in my case. So I'm I'm not I'm I'm not uh, collaborating with a partner which is in the same industry. I'm co co collaborate with the partner. In the industry, we have the same customer base. This is my answer for that. Thank you. Changfa, any idea? Yeah, I mean, when we talk about technologies uh, and copying, um, of course, uh, there, there is a risk there, I have to say. Um, Hi, no, he's working. Uh, no matter who you're working with. So I would like to come back to the uh, question of how you can find uh, a, a partner that you can trust from human perspective. <laughs> Because uh, there are a lot of human beings out there, um, and uh, there are a lot of trustworthy human beings out there in each and every single country. Uh, so, uh, and you know, China is huge. Um, uh, you, you may be able to identify ten partners, um, and I think the only way to um, really um, check if the partner is reliable and not going to copy you is to do a due diligence, uh, not just on the paper side. But on a, a human side, um, by asking for referrals or uh, checking the person's track record, background, or the company. So um, there are many ways how you can do the due diligence. Like I said, uh, uh, I mean, paper side of due diligence is just one thing, and uh, um, but you need to also leverage the Guanxi network in China um, to check this. So yeah, that's my answer. Great. So, uh, due to the limitation of the time, I cannot answer the second question of Patrick, which uh, targeting intercultural team about uh, German and Chinese sales manager and German technical experts and so on. I'm not sure what, uh, in which direction he is targeting between German and Chinese or between sales and uh, technical uh, engineers. Uh, but anyhow, this is a complex topic. We cannot deal with that uh, in the, within this meeting anymore. Um, a I'll last question. Directly. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Contact Martin? me directly, Patrick. We can we can discuss. This is no problem. Yeah, yeah. I think the challenge between German China and between sales and uh, technician is um, almost the same. I can sense. Uh, a quick uh, question to and last question to Martin Martin Abner in this case. Uh, a very short answer then. In which area um, uh, you would like to cooperate with other companies in China? Yeah, one area could be, like I said, the software development. Software development, I think, could be a, a good field of cooperation. 
like uh, Mr. Liu said, um, some, some, they are a partner who is not in the same industry but have the, the same customers and therefore cooperate with software developments, uh, for example, in the IoT sector. It could be a possible partner for the future in the in Chinese market. Thank you very much, Martin. Before I hand over to uh, Nevo, I know I'm uh, quite late. I would like to uh, uh, let the only uh, guest uh, from China, maybe today, William Wang, <laughs> due to the name, and to raise his uh, quick uh, feedback or question. William, please. Thank you, Xiaolong. Uh, I'm very happy to listen uh, uh, what you talked just now. I'm very interested by asking, by taking the limited time to ask the question to Mr. Abner Martin. So, Mr. Abner Martin, uh, could your company, can your company make uh, the special purpose machine for the bending, bending machine? Uh, the bending machine I would like to describe uh, because I, my company is going to buy this machine. And it's difficult to find the suitable supplier, a special purpose of binding machine uh, in mainland China uh, so far for my company. Uh, I would like to briefly describe. So, uh, eight, uh, William, uh, I'm sorry yes? about that uh, to interrupt. I understand your wish. I think uh, I can connect you both. Uh, I think it's a it's a very good topic, uh, Martin. Martin Abel, In this case, we cannot uh, imagine that here is a sales pitch even possible. But uh, anyhow, uh, thank you very much, William. And please contact me. I will bring you both together, and I'm sure that um, Martin Abner will have enough time for you. Is this okay, William? Yes, very good. Thank you, Hello. Thank, thank you. Thank Please, right after the meeting, we can separately talk. Um, Abner, Abner Martin. Yeah, okay? thank you for your understanding. And thank you thank all you. also to other participants for your understanding to uh, extend the meeting uh, for one minute late. Before I hand over to uh, Neville, he has also important message to post. Neville. Okay, Xiaolong, thanks for that. Um, so, yeah, thanks for another interesting and informative discussion. Um, a note to the audience members, um, you can scan the QR codes uh, to get in touch with the experts directly on either LinkedIn or WeChat. And I'd also like to introduce another informative China team venture, and that's the China Hot Pod podcast hosted by Xiaolong, where he discusses topics in depth with experts in Germany and China, providing a tailor-made solutions. In his second, of course, in his second language, which is German, and it's available as usual on all major podcast aggregators. Also, would like to inform you that a recording of the webinar will be available in both video formats and as an and as an audio. The video will be available on YouTube and the audio version podcast will be available on the podcast um, channel Asia Biz Stories, Entrepreneurs in Action. And finally, let's switch over. And finally, the next China team webinar is scheduled for the 9th of December and is titled How to Sell Better B2B Services in China. So follow China team on LinkedIn, keep an eye out for the updates, and remember to tell your friends and colleagues of the value that you've received at the China team webinar. So with that, I'd like to sign off and um, wish you all a very well, uh, all the best for the coming week and as we move forward. Okay, so goodbye. Bye bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye, -bye. bye bye. Great job as always. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you.
just in case you missed it. The next China Team China webinar is scheduled for the 9th of December and is titled Supply Chain Challenges 2022 for your China business. So look out for the Eventbrite registration that will appear in the next few days on LinkedIn.